Good morning and welcome to Floss Tube number 30. Today is Monday, March 4th, and um, my name is CM <laughs> my name is Christine. I am CMD586 on Instagram. That's CMD as in cat mother dog. So follow me there if you're on Instagram and let's just get started. It's it's been a while. Um I did my whip parade. I filmed my whip parade rather. Um I believe on the 25th of, of January, right before, uh, if you watched it, you'll know that was, I filmed it right before I went to my big board gaming weekend and I intended to get it, um, edited and uploaded pretty quickly. It took me about two weeks to get it done. Not because it was that demanding because it wasn't, I minimized what I needed to add to it in terms of pictures and things, but <laughs> Here's what happened. I um, Okay, if you don't care about any of the life stuff at all, just fast forward several minutes. I can't tell you how much, but um, fast forward ways. But um, I think most of you kind of don't mind here in a little bit. So um, I filmed that video and that night I went to my big board gaming weekend and Friday night um, in the middle of the night, because the board gaming weekend starts at six and goes till two in the morning. I usually don't quite make it till two in the morning, but I do, I go as late as I can. And I came home and I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and I had a sore throat. And I, um, but I felt well. I'd been talking a lot and teaching people to play board games and stuff like that. I'm not one of the volunteers, but you know, I'm an experienced board gamer and I end up talking a lot and teaching people, um, often during the, during the gaming process. And, and so I, I felt well, except my throat was scratchy and I was like, well, I'm not going to not do this. I don't actually think I'm contagious. I don't feel, you know, bad. Otherwise it's just a scratchy throat. So I got some cough drops and went on my merry way and was fine all day. That was Saturday. Stayed till about one o'clock in the morning on Saturday night came back home, you know, throat's still scratchy off and on, got up, felt pretty darn good on Sunday, made it through the entire day on Sunday. Um, it ends at 6, I came home right at the tail end at 6 p.m. on Sunday, and I was gonna, like, have dinner and hang out with my family and stitch and stuff like that, and I'll tell you what, I came, I came in the door, and I sat down, and I was like, I'm not doing nothing. Like, no food, no stitching, no visiting with the family, and I just kind of sat there for a while and tried to like motivate myself to do something. And I was like, no, I don't have anything in me. So I went to bed and Monday morning I woke up as sick as I've ever been that I can ever remember being like in my life. And um, not only sick, but um, exhausted. And I've been doing this board gaming thing and you know, for several years now this, this weekend. And this was not like my normal gosh, I burned myself out, I'm tired because I'm not 25 anymore, response. This was like something different. And so I thought mm, I had the flu. <laughs> and uh, so I was pretty sick for several days, but I've had the flu before, I've had colds before, I've had sore throats before. This was different. And, um, and then I realized after several days, like the next week as I was kind of struggling through and I'd been working a little bit like going into work for a couple hours here and there and coming home and um, and My son had been kind of vaguely Unwell and I'd noticed he was doing a lot of like I mean he's a teenager. He plays a lot of video games, etc He's pretty social. He's got a lot of friends But you know he also spends a lot of time in front of the computer and he has portable gaming devices and things like that But I just noticed that he was doing a lot of gaming in bed <laughs> Like every time I would go like try to talk to him about something, I would find him laying down and I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? And so um, he missed a little school, but not too much. But that the next Monday, um, I was like, we're going to, it suddenly occurred to me <laughs> that he might have mono. I still thought, thought I had the flu. Took him in to the doctor. They weren't sure he had mono, but they did the te they did test and they did they tested for everything under the sun in case it wasn't mono and it was, you know, maybe other something else. And so I was right, it was mono. And then a few a few days later I realized I had it. And a few days and it wasn't the flu and and um a few days after that I realized my husband had it. So my son got it the worst. I'm like, I'm 100% now, as far as I can tell. Um, it 
for me, I got over the flu stuff and then I was just really friggin' tired. More tired than I've ever been. Like, a different kind of tired than I've ever been, ever. Um, and not like the kind of tired like I just partied too hard or I, or I, you know, did a whole lot of exercise or a whole lot of hard work over the weekend or whatever, but like just this persistent, there's not enough caffeine in the world, no matter how much sleep I get, I can't get enough. Um, and then maybe I would feel okay, but like I would, one day I got up and I was like, um, oh, I feel pretty okay. You know, I'm going to go like, I was going to go do some work in the kitchen, like clean the kitchen because it needed it <laughs> and do some cooking because I love to cook and I hadn't been doing anything. And I was kind of, you know, feeling kind of low level depressed, not, not just doing my normal stuff. And, and after about, I cooked a very simple, I prepared a very simple meal and did a load of dishes and I was like, no. <laughs> and I went and I sat down and I didn't move for another like six hours. <laughs> so um, I didn't get tested, but I'm sure that that's what I had. It lasted quite some time. And I basically had all the symptoms my son had, except not quite as bad as he got it. He got a sinus infection on top of it. And he is just now, today, he missed a month of school in his last semester of his senior year. And, which is also extremely stressful. I think he's gonna make it, but you know, what can you do? You know, sometimes your body just won't let you do what you think needs to be done. So, um, but I think he's gonna be okay. Hopefully he'll still be at college next next semester, like planned, and you know, his teachers are being very understanding, etc. Anyway, um, I didn't upload the video because I got back from my board gaming thing and I was sick and then a little bit later my husband was sick and there was just no energy to, to do anything unnecessary. And um, my husband fortunately didn't get the exhaustion that I got. He had a few like days where he was like, gosh, I'm weirdly tired. I'm like, well, duh. And, and, uh, but he has had a persistent cough and throat issues and still does. It's, it's fine. He's fine. But, um, you know, for him, it's, it's stayed in his nose and throat and, um, to an unusual degree for him and, um, and, you know, for something like a cold and, um, neither of us had mono as teenagers or, or college students or anything like that, which is the, the norm. And we managed to get it from our child. So, which is not that contagious, but you know, you tell your kid don't eat or drink after anybody else, but then, you know, you eat or drink after him. <laughs> and then of course, you know, your spouse, it's like hopeless. <laughs> They're going to get it. So, um, anyway, so we're all fine. The kid is finally back at school today, which puts me in a very good mood because, you know, um, I'm, it's just very stressful him not going to not going to school and it being the last semester of his senior year and him falling behind and all of this stuff and you know so he's back he's back at it and he's in good spirits and and i can tell he's tired but um but he's um he's coming out of it so that's all good anyway so it just took me a while to upload that that video because i didn't have anything extra in me at all and neither did my husband and then today was the first monday i could really think about want to do this it's been about a week since the exhaustion went away for me um, seven, eight days ago, I think last Saturday, not this past Saturday, but the previous Saturday was the first day that I came home from work. Cause I worked Tuesday through Saturday. First day I came home from work where I didn't like, just be like, Oh, I can't do anything where I kind of felt like a regular, like my regular self, you know, like I could do more than just barely get through work and then come home. So, so, uh, so I'm doing good. Oh, my mug today says you're your you <laughs> you're not fully functional until you have had your coffee <laughs> I love this mug oh and my shirt today haunting of hill house by Shirley Jackson um, one of my favorite books ever it's it's right I've read it several times the Netflix show is just okay as far as I'm concerned. It's good. To me, it doesn't it doesn't um, bear any real resemblance to the book. So so it's a disappointment in that respect. Although I did enjoy I did enjoy the show um, 
regardless, just as for its own self, but in as a relation to the book, it didn't um, didn't do much for me. So, um, okay. So I wanted to give a few shout outs. Um, uh, the first first shout out I want to give is to Candace at Slub Lovers. Candace Slub Lover Stitches. Slub Lover Stitches is all one word wrung together. I'm saying that in case I don't in case I can't be bothered to put links below because I'm kind of um, famously unreliable on that. So Candice, C-A-N-D-I-C-E space slub lover stitches. Um, she has three videos up and, um, and they're great. I love what she stitches. I love her sense of humor. Um, she's, you know, it's definitely, there's a, she, there's a little bit of dirty, <laughs> dirtiness going on there. So, you know, um, she's not for everybody, but, um, but she's definitely for me. Uh, she stitches a lot of small things, a lot of nerdy things, a lot of things that she charted herself. Um, lots of video game related things. Um, uh, music related things. Um you know, kind of nerdy, nerdy stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like, I like her stuff a lot. And she has now three videos out in, um, in her latest, she shows a lot of her like past finishes and things. So go check her out. Cause she's a, she's a, she's a fun girl. <laughs> and, um, and the other shout, another shout out I wanted to give is to cross stitch. I L um, she was born in Russia and, but she's lived most of her life in Israel. And, um, so English is, is not her first language. Um, I first learned about her through Andrea C, uh, I heart cross stitch, um, shouted her out and I went and checked her out and her, her work is, is incredible. And, um, she stitches a lot of things that, that um, that you don't see elsewhere. A lot of uh, kits that she buys from Russia and, and things like that. Um, lots of fun stuff. Um, and in fact, uh, she and Andrea both combined are semi-responsible for a new start I had. <laughs> I had very recently, <laughs> my new obsession. And I will get to that later in the, the whip portion of this video. And finally, kind of a shout out and a like a shout back, if that's what you call it. Although that sounds kind of that, that sounds kind of like clapback, <laughs> but a mutual shout out. <laughs> um, vintage Stitches. Um, she recently watched all of my videos, which I always find it um, sort of crazy flattering to know that somebody is semi binging, binging me. <laughs> Um, but, um, but anyway, she has watched, watched my videos and she did in one of her most recent videos, she did a, um, a shout out of me and I think it is the most recent video. And, um, it was probably the, the kindest, most, the uh, kindest, loveliest, um, shout out that anybody could possibly do for me. <laughs> um, you know, when you hear people talking about, about yourself and you, at first you're very flattered and you, and you think, well, that doesn't even sound like me. And then, but then there's also the, basically she said all the things about me that I wish people thought of me. <laughs> so, and apparently she does. So that's really lovely of her. And it was just, um, uh, you know, and she, she made me laugh and, and, and really flattered me and, um, kind of brought tears to my eyes too when she talked about me and her, her videos are, are great too. Um, one of the things I really love about her is she stitches, or I mean, her, her channel name is Vintage Stitches and she means it. She stitches a lot of older patterns. I, I do too. I mean, I stitch a lot of new stuff, but I also have a fair, a fair quantity of older, older patterns. Um, but she stitches a lot, mostly seemingly older patterns. So they're, they're beautiful things. Um, but they're things that we don't see a lot of, uh, on other people's floss tube videos. It's not the stuff that everybody is stitching. Not that there's anything wrong with what everybody's stitching, but, 
but you know it's kind of nice to see somebody stitching some things that um, that you weren't aware of and um, and so so her her stitching is beautiful and I have been I was um, <laughs> Well, the thing that made me laugh is apparently she was on this no new starts and stuff for for 2019 and she um she's completely fallen off of of that and apparently I'm in no small part responsible for that <laughs> cuz she bought she bought a few patterns that I showed in my in my whip parades etc and um and she's going to be starting them <laughs> so so much for the for the no new starts for 2019 but mm, not sorry <laughs> So anyway, um, so thank you, uh, Vintage Stitches, for your, your lovely words about me, and I really enjoy your, your videos, too. So, um, okay, uh, I've got some haul to show, and it is actually not as much as I thought. I kind of thought, oh, I've been kind of falling off the wagon. I have done a little bit of um, a little bit of shopping, especially during during my illness. You know, when I didn't feel like stitching that much, I did feel like sitting on my phone in my in my bed and and like fantasizing about stitching and purchasing things to stitch. So I do have some things, but not and not an enormous amount. So um, of course, I got the octopus kit that I sort of alluded to. Um, a minute ago, I'll show that with my with my whips though. Um, and then uh, this is this is no particular order. Um, the Jewel Antler Co, who I have never purchased from, she's on Instagram and Etsy, um, posted something on her on her Instagram, and I immediately went and bought it. It's about thirty, I think, of these thread drops, beautiful shiny gold thread drops. These kinds of things are right up my alley. This is kind of how I like to keep floss as I'm working on a project, you know, tie it to something like this, um, or some iteration of this. Um, anything that allows you to, gives you a hole to loop it through um, is kind of, kind of my thing. And it comes with a pretty thing and just a metal, a metal ring. And um, she showed this on her Instagram and I went over to her Etsy and she had like one I don't know if it was just she only made one or if she just had one left, but she had one and it showed one left and several people in their cart. And I was like, oh, I don't really know. I, apparently with Etsy, you put it in your cart, but it's not really yours until you actually purchase it. So I realized that was probably how it worked. And so I was like, well, if there's only one left and five people or something, it said have it in their cart. I'm like, well, I'm going to gonna try to beat these people out. <laughs> So, so I saw that, and then I happened to see at the same time I happened to see a um, a I'll show it to you a kit for punch needle on her site at what I thought was a reasonable price. Punch needle is something I did I have done a little bit as a child, and have been recent, you know, and kind of wanting to get back into it. Um, I feel like it kind of goes along with with uh, cross stitching. And um, there's some good patterns and stuff out there right now, so I wanted to do it anyway. Uh, this is an impulse purchase. She had uh, Jewel, the Jewel Dantler Co. had on her Etsy web shop a um, a punch needle kit, and it came with a bunch of stuff. Um, most of which, frankly, is useful, but not like it's I not really necessary for punch needle. Like it came with it came with Ada fabric, which you know, is useful. I'm not anti-Ada. I'll stitch on Ada, but it's not really ideal for punch needle. It came with a wooden hoop, which, um, yeah, which I will use probably. I'm planning, if I get into this, I'm probably planning to get one of those hoop standy things. I forget what they're called, but Priscilla and Chelsea talk about them. I will get one of those, but nevertheless, a wooden hoop is, is, I finish in hoops. I don't stitch in hoops, although I with punch needle, you do need something. I'm not gonna do punch needle in my hand, but uh, I don't even think you really can. But um, but I will use I will use this regardless for finishing, even if I don't use it for punch needle. It came with um, plastic bobbins, which you know they're useful. A bunch of little tools, some of which I don't even know what they are. Some of which are just sort of generic stitching tools. A punch needle, a seam ripper, I think. Some th needle threaders. Um, one of which is really bent up. Doesn't really matter though. Um, measuring tape, 
um, all kinds of that stuff, just some miscellaneous things, which are, um, you know, some of it's generically useful. Um, and then a whole bag of, of not DMC, um, numbers that correspond to DMC, but this is not, these are like the Chinese, um, imitation. And in fact, the kit came with, has like a Chinese or something tag on it. So, um, so again, not, not a waste of money, but, um, and I will use these and most likely I'll use these for the, for the, my practicing the punch needle. Um, I won't add them to my DMC because I don't expect that they'll fully match the DMC, but, um, you know, not useless. Um, but if I hadn't been being very really impulsive, I probably, cause I do, I've had it in the back of my mind that I do want to do a punch needle, but probably I would have been just as good to like do some research and purchase a kit and like a regular punch needle kit, you know, that comes with the pattern, etc., and kind of buy things that way as opposed to buying this kit. But this is, but this is fine. There's, um, obviously the punch needle is useful. Um, most of it is very useful. Even the Ada fabric, which I won't use for this, you know, can be used for ornaments or something. Um, you know, nothing wrong with it. So, um, so if I'm going to do that though, I need to like get online and probably Teresa Kogut, Kogut, I even got the name right she's um her work has been been featured in the punch needle in primitive stitcher and she puts out cross stitch and punch needle um and she's on floss, floss tube she's got a lot of really great designs um in both cross stitch and and um punch needle and i definitely want to want to um probably start right off with some of hers and i think you can get the weaver's cloth i think it's called weaver's cloth that people usually use for punch needle, I think you can get it on um, one, two, three stitch. So um, anyway, um, there's that. So then I got the latest threads from Trisha at Three All Threads. Um, I had to put one of them in a baggie because the, I put them in these baggies when I'm done, once I've started using them anyway, but this one happened to come with a ripped, a ripped tag, so, which is fine. This is nutmeg, very pretty. Won't take it out of the plastic. I think it's a really nice, slightly variegated brown, reddish brown. I like that. Um, Ohio lemon pie. I really like this one. Um, old brick. Lots of old in 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 this. These are the O's. These are Trisha Three L threads. They're the gassed thread of the month. Whatever. Um, I get the ten yard skeins. Old blue paint. I was like, wait, is there a stain on it? No, it's just a little bitty piece of brown thread from somewhere. Um, old covered bridge. I love this one. I think I already have it for a project, but that's okay. I use more of it. Old purple paint. More brown than purple, but that doesn't matter. Oatmeal. Mustard seed. That's a good color. Old red paint. And old hickory. So, um, very prim browns and, you know, those are all, they, these colors all kind of go together. <laughs> but uh, those are good. Um, uh, Laura from the Slovak farm. She started Facebook group. Um, I think you can find it pretty easily by going on Facebook and looking at Slovak farm. She's started Facebook group for like the things she's hand dyeing. Um, and, um, I was one of the first people to join her Facebook group and I immediately went looking for fabric cause I can always use more fabric. And this is what I found. Um, I think she said this is, I think she said this is an unrepeatable color, um, but nevertheless, it's 32 count Jobalon, so it's 18 by 27, and she says Wedgwood Blue Dark, but um, she does say it's an unrepeatable color, but that is a really, it's actually a very nice, very nice piece of fabric. I am very pleased with that. Um, so, and I have... 
a specific project in mind for it. I haven't decided if I'm actually going to do that project. This would work for a lot of things. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I really like that. And, I, and 32 count, useful for a lot of things. Jobalon is good fabric. Um, no complaints. It's, um, oh, that dark spot is not on the fabric. That is, that is her tag. So that, that just gets clipped right off. So anyway, it's really, that's really beautiful. This is the kind of thing that I would like to be able to make myself. In fact, the fab, the project I have in mind for this, that I may or may not use it for, I made a fabric for that project that I got, I, that I was trying to make this color, basically, this darker blue and I was not able to get it as dark as I wanted it um I did decide the fabric would still be useful usable for that piece but this is really what I wanted this darker same tone darker blue and so I might just use it for that um okay next I um I've been on kind of at least mentally kind of on a Charlie Harper kick um He's popular up here in Alaska, even though he doesn't, I don't, I think, is he the artist who's in Cincinnati, who is from Cincinnati or Ohio? I think Pam and Steph said that, unless I'm thinking of somebody different. A different artist. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, but he's really popular up here in Alaska, and I've always kind of been like, eh, kind of lukewarm on his, his stuff, but... Recently, um, a coworker of mine bought a big like Charlie Harper art book, and I looked through it, and I, I don't know, I just gathered like a new appreciation for his stuff. So then I went on, um, I went on eBay, and I looked for some Charlie Harper cross stitch patterns, and I found way too many actually. So I didn't want to go hog wild, so I bought two of them. The first one I bought is Love from Above, which is you know, looks like basically a mother, mother giraffe licking her, I think she is licking her baby giraffe, which is just, I mean, that's just a lovely design. <laughs> really pretty and just sweet. And, um, yeah. And it says nice things on it. Like it, there's a paragraph about love and giraffes and oh, yeah, motherly, brotherly, and otherly. Love is always in the air, and for a giraffe calf still wet behind the ears, love's a warm, wet tongue that comes down from the treetops like mom's everywhere. This one's up to her instincts in the project, with her head in the clouds and her feet on the ground. Awake, her towering toddler is a pain in the neck, but when he's sleeping, doesn't that angelic look bring a lump to your throat lump to your throat oh, probably because it's a long neck a lump to your throat <laughs> that is so sweet and so poetic um and and there's only six colors in this they're all um they're all there's plenty of quarter like three quarter stitching um and quarter stitching to bring out the details um but this is not a terrifically demanding piece. Six colors. Yeah, I'm going to start that soonish. And then um, the other one I got um, is Pure Group, which um, this, this makes me laugh. Sorry, right, this is being a pain, kind of a pain. It's the Pat Rogers Counted Collection. Um, and here is what it looks like. So hanging out on a pier. And um, this actually looks like a little bit more demanding of a project, which is fine. It's a few. Oh, there's, oh, wow. There's like beads and smearna stitches and long stitches. Um, yeah, this is, there's more to this. Oh, and here's a different, different picture. So, so this says peer group, even on the piers, peer pressure appears, pelican 
or person, we all experience persistent and perpetual persuasion to perform like the pack. Even if we have to stand on our front, to stand on one foot to do it, I guess you'd go jump in the ocean if your pals did, is a perennial people parent complaint when the, when the commendation of contemporaries <laughs> precludes progenital approval. And that's just what a pubescent pelican does with his peers on the piers. <laughs> Go jump in the ocean. <laughs> I haven't even read this before. That is so cool. <laughs> ah, I love it. Um, so, oh, these are stapled right in the middle of the, of the piece. I do not like this at all. Why did they do that? They stapled right into the paper. I think it was accidental. The paper was just a little too high up. Um, cover model stitched with two strands floss on Confederate Gray's Weiger 8th, 14. Black seed beads have been used for eyes. So seed beads for eyes. Oh, oh, cute. And then it gives you a pattern for the for that thing that I read, which is like I'm I'm crazy excited about that. Um, because I really like that. Um, so, um, you get a pattern. With all the words. I totally am going to get to stitch that together. And then the, the other, the rest of the pattern is in two pages. Um, and there are, um, not too many colors. Um, just, uh, like, well, again, six colors. Um, but then there's back stitching and long stitching, um, black beads, chain stitch, um, you, the ropes it looks like have like, so this is really cool. Yeah, this is a lot, a lot more, um, in depth than I thought it would be, but it's really cool. No, I, I really want to do that one and I'm super excited that it comes with the the verse to stitch too, because I read that and I was like, oh, that's awesome. So no, I'm I'm very excited about this one. Okay, that took me a while, sorry. Not sorry. Okay, then my husband and I, in the midst of being sick, Valentine's Day happened and we were like, yeah, we got nothing in us. We're not going out to eat, you know, nothing. And so we, um, he had wanted to go see a movie which would have been for him and because it was a movie he wanted to see, but he didn't even have that in him. So in the end, oh, this is very perfumey. I'm going to have to put this, set this out. Um, in the end, we just gave each other money, which sometimes we do. It's just an excuse to, to buy what you want, right? So, but, so I've been meaning for a long time to get some of these bothy threads. I have a whole cone of DMC 310 and what I really just need is the pattern I don't need everything all the things this the the fabric etc but I found it at a, for a decent price on eBay the whole kit I may or may not use the kit I don't know it comes it comes with all this black it's probably anchor black would be my guess um 14 count it is Zweiger Ada which is great um the silver and red metallic I feel like that might be might be like the devil I might want to to replace that with something else um, but um, and then I don't know about the fabric it, the fabric though is Zweiger Ada it smells extremely perfumey so I have to air it out regardless um, but it's beautiful so I might use it my thoughts were to use you know um, a linen or an even weave but look how pretty that pretty that is if I decide not to use the materials and just stitch it on my own um, ultimately I will give away, once I'm done stitching it, I will give away the materials, but I might just use the materials. Um, I'm going to give it, I think I'll, I think this is really actually lovely. The perfume is a problem, but I can hang this up and it'll be fine. Um, but the, um, but it is Weigert. It is not stiff at all. It's very nice. It is very nice, Ada. Um, and I'm not anti-Ada and I enjoy working on Ada. Um, it's just when I originally saw these patterns, I just thought, well, I don't need the, I don't need the kit. I just need the pattern, which are not that easy to find by themselves. Um, surprisingly to me, cause you know, I would expect people to do them and then, and then 
resell the pattern, but um, I will do it and give away the pattern. Um, and the, I've never had a bothy threads kit. The pattern is pretty nice. It's big. It's it's big, plenty big. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we'll see. Anchor black. I, I hate to have threads go to waste. I'll probably go ahead and use it. Um, it's not my favorite, and I have that whole cone of BMC 310, so we'll see. And it came with a came with a needle. Um, okay, so that's what I got for my Valentine's Day. And then some several floss tubers are talking about this. This cross stitch. Um, calendar which I bought through my bookstore but um, my bookstore didn't didn't have it and so I ordered it through the bookstore I work at um, I was like to the calendar order in person I was like oh, why on earth did you not tell me about this and order it for me <laughs> so she's gonna be ordering it for me next year <laughs> for 2020 but um, but anyway it is actually really quite nice I like most of the patterns um, the pictures inside are beautiful. I'm not use, I'm not hanging it obviously though. I mean I could, I should, but I'm not. And then it comes with a this is actually really nice. The patterns come in a pocket separately like this, all loose. But um what I really like is each of the patterns comes with is it two different? Okay, you get you get a lot of options here. This is really nice. I'm gonna show you just to show you so you can know what you're getting in case you can still get this. So each of the patterns comes with basically four different patterns. Same pattern, but if you have a preference for how you look looking at patterns, um, you're gonna have it made. So it comes with, um, the first part is color blocks with symbols. I'll just show you part of that. Color blocks with symbols. Then on the back of that, back of the, that you have what I don't think anybody would like, but they give it to you anyway. Just color blocks, no symbols. Um, color symbols. I've never really seen that before, where it's just colored symbols. And then finally on the back, which people seem to really like and most I'll probably use. The typical black and white symbols. And each chart fits on just one page. It's thin paper. It's like copy paper. It's nothing special, but um, really it's, I mean, you don't have to fold it or anything. It's really pretty nice. I'm pretty impressed with it. So a lot of times these cross stitch calendars are not only not great patterns, but they're just generally not very good quality, but I'm actually pretty impressed with this. And these are all from the awesome pattern studio. Um, anyway, which I, is on Etsy, I believe. So anyway, I'm pretty happy with those. Um, I don't know that I'd do them all, but I would do I would do several of these. I really I really like them. So this is what it what it comes with. May not be still too late to get this on, on online, etc. Probably most of your local bookstores and stuff are like done with calendars. I know we are just put all of ours on deep discount and have very few left. But, um, but I think, you know, you can still, you can still find it. Um, and your bookstore, your local bookstore may be able to order it for you. That's what I did. I special ordered it for myself, but I could have done it for a customer. It's, it was still in stock at the distributors. Okay, so that is it for the haul, except for my new start. And this isn't haul, but this kind of, kind of haul. I, several months ago, I sent um, my... And I knew it was going to be several months. I sent two things away to the amazing Vonna Pfeiffer to fully finish for me. And I got them back, honestly, sooner than I expected to because she made no bones about it, the fact that I was going to have to wait a while. <laughs> so I think I sent them to her in like August. Whenever I sent them to her, though, it was after her deadline for Christmas. And I wasn't interested in Christmas anyway. It didn't matter to me. And it was going to be like after Christmas, after she took a break, and then I was going to be in line. And I didn't know where I was in line. So, you know, there was no, um, I honestly got it back sooner than I expected. So I can't believe these, these are amazing. Let's, so I'll show them to you one at a time. This is Witch's Pets by 
hand blessings. Um, these also both remind me very much of StitchCon because I bought the pattern and the fabric for this at StitchCon. And um, yeah, the pattern is swamp. Uh, the fabric is swamp. I think it's 32 count um, by Picture This Plus. And um, Vana offered me lots of options. I didn't really have a clear idea of what I wanted. Um, but after talking to her a little bit, I decided that uh, like a flat finish that I could hang flush up against the wall would probably work best for me. I have lots of wall space. So um, there's the back and the cording, like just, and this, the bow, the bat is mine. It came with the, came with the pattern. And I won't say what I paid because, you know, like I think there's a lot of variation um, in what you pay depending on what materials you used, what kind of finishing you use, etc. But it is worth every penny. I did not feel like I overpaid. So I could have paid significantly more and still been happy. So um, beautiful. I'm just, I'm thrilled. And these are going hanging on the wall like today. Okay, and then this one though, like I feel like she was extra inspired. That one is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Couldn't be happier. But this one... <laughs> <sighs> Fireworks on the 4th by Stone Street Stitchworks. And I didn't provide any of the backing fabrics or any of the bows or anything like that. Um, this is all Vana. And um, this is Fireworks on the 4th by Stone Street Stitchworks. This was free to us at StitchCon the pattern. And I bought, this is 36 count, I believe it's dirty linen. Uh, also purchased at, um, at StitchCon at Keepsakes. And yeah, see that the blue around there, the colors she matched, she matched the colors so incredibly. Um, beautiful cording and there's the back. And I just, I kind of had it in my head to send this one to my mother, but I cannot like, Maybe if I have some other things professionally finished by Vana, I have several things in mind to send to her. I'm also going to try out some other finishers um, just to spread the love around. Not, I mean, Vana is amazing, and um, but other people do good work too. So, um, But I have several things in mind to send to Vana um, and others. Um, so maybe uh, if I get used to this whole beautiful fully finished by somebody else thing, I might see my way clear to like giving giving something away to somebody I love like my mother but um I can't I cannot give this up this has got to hang on my wall in a place of honor where I can see it every single day and I don't care that it's fourth of July same with the Halloween I've said it before maybe someday I'll be doing things seasonally but now for now everything I do unless it's a Christmas ornament for the Christmas tree I just hang it up year-round so anyway does huh just amazing okay this is a long video i didn't really think it'd be that long um all right so whips and finishes number one i joined the school of magical stitches because everybody is doing it right and um it's not sales etc a lot of that stuff doesn't really work out for me for a variety of reasons but i do love to count stitches and um that's one of the big things with with this group is counting stitches and getting points for it and I'm that's kind of the person I am counting record keeper timer I do all that stuff I get a pleasure out of out of all tracking all of that stuff so um so I joined the school of magical stitches and um I did the sorting hat thing and um and I think I was like I did the a test and that was supposed I think I was supposed to end up in Ravenclaw but I ended up in Slytherin Thing. I can't remember what it said. Here's the thing. I'm not really a Potterhead. I've sort of read the books, read some of the books. I was all grown up by the time the books were popular. I've definitely read the first book. I've read the first book in English and French. I don't really speak French, but I go back and forth trying to like relearn it since I learned it in high school and um, relearn reading it. And, um, and so I have read the first book in French very painstakingly. Um, I have the first two books in French. I've watched bits and pieces of the movie. I'm generally familiar with the story, but I'm not really, I'm just not really, 
not really into it, but I am into reading and I do enjoy, enjoy. And um, let me just say, you don't really have to be that into the Harry Potter stuff to be in the School of Magical Stitches. For me, it's about the camaraderie of the, 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 the house groups and, um, and the points. <laughs> you know, kind of the competition aspect of it, but it's a, not a like a heavy duty competition. Like you don't, you don't have to do any of it. You know, there's no negative points for not for not doing stuff. Um, you just participate as much as you want. And I like counting stitches, so it comes naturally to me. Anyway, so I joined School of Magical F Stitches, and um, and it's going well. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So since we last spoke. Um, I finished my, um, I finished my, I don't think I have the pattern back here, but you don't need to see it. I finished Dreaming of Sunflowers by, um, the Rosewood Manor, which is earmarked, the pattern is earmarked to go to a friend of mine, um, when I can get around to sending it to her. Um, and, uh, and here is where you were, it was when last you saw it. And... Here it is now. I finished it. I also need to cut off this fabric because there's a lot of beautiful fabric here that is not necessary for this. And this is meant to be a gift for a friend of mine who I work with who loves, who her favorite colors are yellows and oranges. And so um, I'm having doubts about giving it to her, not because I don't want to give it to her. I love it, but I don't need it. Um, I know she'd appreciate it, but I'm just having like, like I'm just having weird doubts about it. Like, Will she think I'm weird for giving this to her? <laughs> it's more orange than yellow. Does she really just like yellow? You know, just self-doubt. But I'm going to give it to her because I've been thinking about her this whole time I've been stitching it. So at some point I'm going to give it to her. I'm not sure when. <laughs> but I will. Um, so I finished that. So there's finish. And then I think that was my third finish of 2019. Then I believe my fourth finish of 2019 was this one. I said I was going to do this one next, I thought. And this one got a whole lot of work on it thanks to the School of Magical Stitches because Halloween stitching is easily fit inable into the into the um, into the School of Magical Stitches. You can honestly fit almost anything in though. So, um, but um, but the Halloweeny stuff works works real well because all the Harry Potter stuff, the black cats and the broomsticks and the you know. All the things, all the supernatural stuff. So I won't show a picture of where it was when last you saw it, but basically it was only like, I had finished like one and two thirds or so pieces of the uh, the uh, parts. I'd finished the first part and like started the second part and then the rest I did, thanks to School of Magical Stitches. This is by Tempting Tangles. It was a sal called the Great Cheshire Pumpkin Sal. And, but now it is available in one, two, three stitch just to purchase. So, um, so there I am. I love this. It's all the called for everything. I didn't alter it. I was tempted, but I didn't alter it in any way. A couple of things tempted me. Number one, there's a cat down here who's got his head turned around backwards. You see his tail hanging out over the tombstone, but his eyes too. So like that his tail you could fix that by just putting the tail behind him or fix it by removing the eyes so that he was facing you, with his back to you but I just decided to leave it because <laughs> I think it's kind of funny and then the other place I was tempted to um, sorry I think there's just a stitch I need to fix in there if I send this to somebody to finish like Lana I will I will make sure it's perfect before I send it to her. <laughs> um, the other place I thought about changing but didn't is this this cat right there. He's not, he doesn't match the rest of the cats and I feel like that's an error but I, wait, maybe that's not a cat. Could that be a big rat? Maybe that's a big rat. I thought it was a cat. It looks like a cat, but it could also totally be a big rat, which if it's a big rat, if it's a big rat, it makes more sense that it'd be brown. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so there's that. That is my fourth finish for 2019, I believe. Okay, did that and all the called for everythings. 
Okay, then um, I have a big start and that I made huge progress on, but I'm going to show you another thing. Thanks to School of Magical Stitches, they have one of, okay, I've said that they that you can usually fit whatever you want to stitch into the thing, but they did this cool thing. Every week is different. They do all these events. It's very, like, there's a lot of variety, but it's not too overwhelming. Like, I'm usually able to get stuff done almost too quickly, um, but... Um, but they had this one thing where they had us submit a list of our top 20 whips and then um and then they said okay if you have more than if you have 20 whips or more um if you have 20 whips on this list you need to stitch on number 13. and i was like oh you know you're you're theoretically choosing whips you all you really like but there were some whips on there that yes i like them but i don't necessarily feel like stitching them um and you had to stitch on that one if you had less than 13 12 or fewer whips you had to stitch on number one and number three on your list and also i wasn't super thoughtful about like i made my list in no particular order and then if you only had one whip you had to do i think like 50 extra stitches or something but on that one whip and but you for that homework you didn't have a choice it wasn't like you could stitch penalty stitches and stitch on something else you had to stitch if you wanted the credit you had to stitch on the one that was on your list and I did. And then there was also a bit of homework, extra credit homework, um, for that involved frames. So I had, first off, I had to stitch 350 stitches on, this is Coffee Break by Design Works. I won't show you a picture of where it was before. It's been over a year since I worked on it. So I'm thrilled to get back to this. Um, and basically I had, I had finished the first four that you see finished here and then some of the border on the uh, that you see that extends to the fifth and sixth block um but for the homework of my 13th project on my list i had to do 300 stitches yes 300 stitches on it and i did them on this block and then there was a and then i you know what once i started working on it i wanted to keep working on it even though i wasn't enthusiastic about being forced to work on it obviously not forced but if I wanted the credit, I needed to work on it. Wasn't enthusiastic about it, but I got enthusiastic about it as I was working on it. And then the other, one of the extra credit things was 500 stitches of borders or frames. And so obviously I did, I was able to put in 500 stitches um, around the, of the squares around the border. So, and rediscovered my love of this project that hasn't been touched in too long. Um, even if I don't touch it again this year, at least I did touch it and uh, it won't go, it won't have been like, oh, I didn't make any progress on it this year. So that's all thanks to Met School of Magical Stitches. So now, then, there was a project, a realist kit. So I wasn't going to buy a realist kit until after I finished my Beagles or my Old Street, one of the two. The Beagles would be getting finished first. But um, I wasn't going to buy, wasn't going to buy another realist kit. A few months ago, Realist posted on their Instagram about this kit, and that was the last I saw of it. Didn't see it on their in their catalog or anything. It was brand new, and I couldn't. And in fact, I I mentioned it on their Facebook page. I said, "Hey, is this kit actually available anywhere? It's not in your catalog, etc." And um, then I could just kind of let it go and filed it away in the back of my mind as a someday. And um, then Andrea C. at I Heart Cross Stitch, she referred, she talked about, I think she talked about the kit, but she also talked about um, Cross Stitch I.L., um, the lady, I said, who is, was born in Russia and lives in Israel and does some really great things um, that you aren't seeing anywhere else, um, at least not uh, and not very much of on the floss tube and stuff like that. And she, um, she was talking about getting this kit and then, so I was like, okay, well I should revisit this and see if I can find it somewhere. And I went and I found it on eBay for 40 bucks from France, including shipping and which is a good price for a kit like this. And I snatched it up and then I found it on another site that was just a slight bit cheaper than that um but anyway that's okay i was totally happy to pay 40 bucks and have it from from ebay ebay is honestly by and large the 
for those of us in the United States, I found eBay to be mostly the place to get these, these like Riolis kits. Um, the, the, it ships faster than you think it's going to, and the pricing isn't bad. And a lot of times you get free, free shipping. Um, and the prices are, are better, are better than one, two, three stitch. Um, not that I don't want to support one, two, three stitch as a, like a, you know, a U.S. business. Um, but I, I give plenty of money to one, two, three stitch. So I don't feel bad about going to eBay for some of this stuff. If you buy directly from Russia or even in my case, I bought this from France, you're, you know, the shipping is usually not bad and, um, and you can end up getting, getting a good price. So anyway, so without further ado, this is Undersea Kingdom by Realist, and this is so up my alley. And I'm also excited that Andrea C. is interested in stitching this. Um, I don't think she's purchased it at this point, and I don't know if she will anytime soon, but I know she's into it. And that excites me because she and I, um, I adore her videos, and she's very supportive of me as well. We really like each other. Um, I feel free to say that. <laughs> I'm confident that she likes me as much as I like her. But our stitching, our stitching um, tastes don't have a whole lot of overlap. But um, but she wants to do this, and I'm doing it, and I couldn't wait any longer. And um, and so um, I started this. I got this, and I started it, and I have barely put it down since. And I have done a lot on it. So that's where I am. Um, it comes with Zweigert 14 count Ada fabric. This kit is mostly wool threads and it's a mix of wool threads and anchor threads. It is full coverage. There are a um, few half stitches, but it is mostly whole stitches and full coverage. So there is a lot of labor involved in this one. There are 41 symbols on the chart for stitches that aren't back stitches. Um, I think there's only one symbol that involves half stitching, but of those 41 symbols that are not back stitching, um, there's like eight different back stitch symbols. Um, but there of those 41 regular stitch symbols, 27 of them are blends. So, um, let me show you <laughs> the, let me just show you because this is the best thing ever in kits and my favorite thing about realists is how the floss comes so and most of the floss in this kit is wool it's a mix of wool and acrylic the the wool floss is not all wool um, but it feels very woolly when you're working with it I find it very durable I love it and it is beautiful it has it, it just gives this really soft, well-blended um, appearance. It's lovely. It's durable. I've heard somebody say it's not durable, but I find it extra durable. I find it way more durable than DMC. I stitch with very long strands of it, and um, and I don't have any issues with it. It doesn't break on me. It's just lovely. And then this, there is some thread in this one. I think just these handful down to down to this number seven these are anchor they're not yeah they're six stranded anchor and most of these if not all of them when you stitch with them um a couple of them are like tweeted one strand of each but most of them use three strands um and in spite of the fact that it's three strands it is less um less thick than um than the two strand wool. The coverage is is different. It creates creates kind of a three dimensional effect of where the where the um, well you can see like in here like the octopus is all the wool acrylic and then the water that's in here is anchor and even though it's three strands the octopus kind of stands out on it um, because they're the the two strands of wool acrylic are thicker than the three strands of, of cotton. Anyway, um, it's wonderful. Um, 
I've talked a lot about realist kits in the in the past, so I don't want to keep going on and on about it because you've already heard a lot of that from me. So, um, and you can go, there's a video. I want to say it's number eight, but I might be wrong. I believe it's number eight where I talk a whole lot about realist kits. So if you really are burning to know more about realist kits, you can go to go to that video and um, and see, you know, I talk about the, the different threads and how they're organized and blah, 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 why you should use the fabric that comes with the kit, etc. So, okay, so I think, I think that's it. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. Here is my Oort jar for the year. Every year, I start a new Oort jar. And I don't put my Oorts in here until I finish the project. So this is the Oorts from my, down there in the blue, you can see my Biscorni that I did with the, with the um, Galder Saphir, the New Year's Eve Biscornu Mystery Sal on there, all that orange and green and yellow, that is all from Rosewood Manor's Dreaming of Sunflowers. Um, there's something missing. Oh, sorry. Also in here, amongst the blue and orange, sort of at the bottom there, that is the You Are My Density, I mean my destiny, the, the Back to the Future project I did for my husband. And then it's Rosewood Manors, and then on top of that is all that brown and black and a uh, little bit of blues and and creams and stuff, beiges from the Tempting Tangles, um, Great Cheshire Pumpkin Sal. So, anyway, I love this thing. <laughs> okay, talk to y'all later.